I'm sitting right now with Christina Enriquez, whose book is The Book of Unknown Americans, a great new novel. Um, it's been a nice run for you. The, what, one of the first things that I noticed as I was reading the book was the sense of displacement in your book, and that was the first topic that I wanted to talk about with you. That seems like a major theme. Yeah, I think it is. This is a book that's about a group of immigrants who come from all over Latin America, and they come and they live in one apartment building in Delaware. I mean, they come at various times throughout their lives, but they all end up in the same apartment building, and they're all trying to find like this sense of home. Um, and I think that idea of displacement is something that I live with personally. So I was born in Delaware, but I moved around a lot as a kid, so I moved to Miami, actually, after that and then to Virginia, to a small mountain town, and then we moved to Indiana, back to Delaware. I went to school in um, Evanston, Illinois, and then I lived on the south side of Chicago for a while after that. I moved to Iowa, moved to Dallas, Texas, and now I'm back in Illinois. So my whole life has been sort of about feeling this displacement um, and this sense of, you know, everywhere I would end up trying to find like a sense of belonging where I would land. Um, and so I think that connected me so much to the characters in the book. I mean, their challenges are a lot greater than mine in so many ways. You know, everywhere I would move, everyone spoke English, for example, so that was easy. Um, but, you know, just that idea of trying to find where do you belong, like what is this place called home, what is that idea of home, um, I think was something that I could identify with so much with those characters. Mm -hmm. Why were you moving around so much when you were younger? Everyone asked me if my dad was in the military, but he just got transferred a lot for different jobs. And, um, and then in my adult life, it was to go to various schools and get different degrees mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So. It's, an, it's an immigrant story, but it's in Delaware. And it's sort of, the, you don't necessarily think Delaware when you think yeah. immig immigrant story. Yeah, I wrote about Delaware partly because, like I said, I was born there. So I wanted to write about a place that was close to me. But also, I think it's been interesting to hear people's reactions along the way, exactly like you said. People seem surprised to learn that there is any sizable immigrant population in Delaware, but in fact there is. Um, and partly that's because just over the state line in Pennsylvania, there are these mushroom farms who used to bring in laborers. Um, from all over Latin America to come and work the mushroom farms. And that's what one of the characters in the book ends up doing. But then the people who worked at those farms would live in Delaware, where it's a little bit more economically feasible to live. Um, the sign when you run into Delaware, or when you drive into Delaware, is home of tax free shopping. You know, <laughs> like there's no sales tax. It's a little bit easier to live in Delaware rather than in Pennsylvania. So now they have roots, though, and there's a real community um, of immigrants who live in Delaware. And it was important to me to keep it set there because, you know, this isn't just a story that's happening in L.A. or in Houston or in New York or in Miami. This is really a story that's happening in virtually every pocket of the country. It's really, to me, an American story. And I wanted setting it in a little overlooked place like Delaware was part of my way of saying that. Mm -hmm. And the idea, of, to me, of, of family is so critical, too. When you think about... The, the hardships of this family coming to from Mexico to Delaware with no real understanding and leaving behind their jobs. That's a major theme of the book and it's something that I think um, as you as you're as I was reading it really felt like so powerful. This was a really difficult time for this family. Yeah, I think so. Um, and one of one of my goals was you know, I wanted to subvert certain stereotypes and certain myths that people have about immigration and about immigrants. And one of the myths that we have, or one of the stories that we tell ourselves, is that people come to the United States for, quote unquote, a better life, right? But this, none of the main families in the story, there's two main families. One is the Toros, who come from Panama, and one's the Riveras, who come from Mexico, like you said. And one of the characters from the Rivera family, Arturo Rivera, says near the end that they didn't come to the United States for a better life. They had, in Mexico, a beautiful life, but they came because their daughter, Maribel, suffered a brain injury, and so they needed her to get a certain level of care and education in the, that only the United States offered. Um, and so they brought her to a specific school in Delaware, which is why they ended up there. But, um, you know, I just, I wanted to just show that idea that, you know, people come for all different kinds of reasons. Let's talk about family a little bit too. Um, the, in, in Mexico, you have the, um, a, a family that was very together. They loved Mexico. When they came to Delaware, the entire family unit had to somehow stay together in a world that was very different from them. 
Can you talk a little bit about the importance of family to you growing up and yeah. to this family in the book? Yeah, I'm really close to my family. We all live all over the place at the moment. My brother lives in Japan. My sister used to live in Panama. Now she lives in New York. My parents are still in Delaware. Um, but we, through the webcams and you know, just modern technology, talk to each other like every day. I think I talk to my mom probably like four times a day. <laughs> so family is something that is really important to me in my life. And I think my dad is from Panama. Um, and we would grow up going to visit his family who all lived there still. Since I was born pretty much, like I think the first time I went I was eight months old. And I've gone every year since to Panama. Um, and you know that sense of family of people like we would get there and we would arrive and all the family who we hadn't seen for the past year would descend upon my grandparents house and we would have these giant parties and there was always just this real feeling of like joy and togetherness um, that I think I grew up with and really cherish um, and I think for the characters in the book it's so hard because they've left their families behind in so many cases but what they find when they come to the United States is this kind of default family, this de facto family with the other immigrants who live in this apartment building. You know, they become each other's life raft in a sense on, you know, what's otherwise a very uncertain sea. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a really hopeful book, I thought, in a lot of ways. Um, and yet, and it didn't feel overtly political, but at the same time, uh, right now, the topic of immigration is so political. Um, so you wade in with this st hopeful story, uh, sort of a classic immigrant story, and yet, in the middle of a really hotly political time, how has that affected the perception of the book for you and, and the thoughts about this as a, as a political work? It's interesting because I went into it thinking, it took me like five years to write this book. So, you know, immigration is such a topic right now, um, especially in light of Obama's speech the other night. Um, you know, it's something really at the forefront of the American conversation. But, the whole time I was writing it, it actually, there was still, there was a lot of conversation around immigration. And I knew going into it that I didn't want to write a political book. I didn't want to write something that felt heavy handed or overly didactic in any way. I wanted to really focus on the human stories behind sort of what we hear about in the news a lot of times. So for me, I always say that the book isn't really a book about immigration, it's a book about immigrants which to me are very different things. You know, immigration is like the political reality. It's a system. And immigrants are the people behind it. And that's what's so important to me. I mean, even this morning, I was in my hotel room and um, I had CNN on, which I never watched, but I had it on in the hotel room. And it was, they were talking about, they were like, what's the political fallout and the political implications of Obama's speech? And it was like, I just felt like that's, that's the wrong conversation, right? I mean, we should be talking about how does it affect real people um, and what are their stories? And that, to me, has always been my focus, and that's one of the things that I think fiction can bring to the table, um, is to sort of broaden our sense of empathy and understanding about real people, ordinary stories, ordinary situations. Um, part of the inspiration for this book was my mom actually is a translator for the school district in Delaware. She works with lots of immigrant families. And I hear sometimes the stories and their struggles and what they're going through. And when I listened to Obama the other night, I thought specifically about some of those families and how this would directly impact them and affect them um, in ways that I think are both moral and necessary. Um, and so to me, I mean, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. There's so much work to do, but it's a step in the right direction. And, you know, if my book can play any part in enhancing the conversation, then that's awesome. But that was never my goal. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. You, you mentioned there's a one part in the book that says, the, and it's the title this comes from, the unknown Americans are the ones no one wants to know. But you then talk about how stories can sort of connect you in a more human way to yeah. someone and to sort of erase some of the boundaries, the, the artificial boundaries we put on people, once you get to know who they are and their stories themselves, you, you can sort of cross that and right. begin to connect with the human in a more natural way. Yeah, I think it's so important. I mean, I was reading an article, um, I'm a few issues behind on my New Yorkers, but I, I, Everyone have, is. Yeah, I yeah. have two kids at home and so I never get time to read, but I was on this airplane yesterday and so I brought a stack of New Yorkers and I read this article um, about this kid in Alabama who was convicted for murder. You know. It, this whole story. 
and it was giving all the details of the case. And then at the very end of the article, it had him in his own words. And he said a few very, very small things about how when he was young, he started stealing bologna because um, they couldn't afford any food, but, and he didn't want to go to the neighbors to admit that he couldn't afford any food, to ask for any, because he would be ostracized if he was seen as that poor kid who couldn't afford any food, so he started stealing. Like, there were these little things that was like, just to hear about baloney, right? Like, that humanized his story so much at the very end of this thing that had all the case details that I had been reading. I don't know, I just felt like that's why we tell stories, right? So, connect to somebody, um, to broaden our scope of empathy, to, and ultimately to become better people ourselves. And that's one of the greatest compliments that I've gotten about the book, I have to say, because I've gone around and done lots of events. And once in a while, someone will come up to me and say, after reading your book, I think of people differently. You know, like I was driving down the street and I saw people waiting at a bus stop. This happened to be in Delaware where the book is set. and this woman who was telling me said, I looked at those people and I realized they all had a story and I thought of them differently. And I mean, that's like, that's like a huge thing to hear. I mean, that's incredible. Um, so, you know, to the extent that fiction can do that, I think that's what one of the aims of it. It's one of the great things about the power you have as a writer. And the book is beautiful and lovely and thank you for joining us thank today, you. Christina. The Book of Unknown Americans is your novel. I hope everyone goes out and reads it and thanks thank so you. much for joining us. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to meet you.